four safety car appearances, a treacherous turn three, a near-death experience, and a race victor who saw his car burst into flames. The 2003 Brazilian GP had more twists and turns than the track itself. So, let's recount his story, shall we? In the third round of the 2003 season, Formula One was undergoing quite a transformation, recovering from a lackluster 2002 championship dominated by Ferrari and Michael Schumacher. FIA President Max Mosley introduced new rules on the eve of the 2003 season, and those changes, whether due to or in spite of Mosley's interventions, brought about the desired effect, with Ferrari failing to win any of the first three races. The Scuderia, accustomed to their dominance in the 2002 championship, faced a shaky start as drivers Michael Schumacher and Ruben Barrichello grappled with errors. Meanwhile, rising talents like Kimi Raikkonen and Fernando Alonso of Renault were beginning to shine, supported by a formidable Williams BMW car. The F1 manufacturer era was gaining momentum, with powerhouses like BMW, Ferrari, Mercedes and Toyota injecting unprecedented investments into the sport. Interlagos, in particular, would be the backdrop for one of the most spectacular F1 one races of all time. The ever-changing weather during qualifying resulted in a shuffled grid, with seasoned frontrunners like Michael Schumacher, P7, and Juan Pablo Montoya, P9, finding themselves further back than anticipated. Amidst the Brazilian crowd's cheers, Barrichello's Ferrari eventually clinched pole position, flanked by the McLarens of Raikkonen and Coulthard and the Jaguar of Mark Webber. And come Sunday, following a mid-morning downpour, the track conditions were challenging, to say the least. Interlagos looked closer to the Amazon River than an actual racetrack. There was also a new rule in the 2003 season. Teams were mandated to stick to a single type of wet tire for an entire weekend, be it intermediates or full wets. So, unsurprisingly, a dilemma arose as the rain continued to pour relentlessly. The teams had unanimously chosen the intermediate tires, a choice suitable for the unpredictable weather shifts, but ill-suited for the standing water that now challenged them at Interlagos. It also started earlier in the day, as a fierce storm swept through the circuit and forced a 15-minute delay to the race start. Once the cars emerged onto the track, it was behind the safety car, and so it would be for eight laps, as everyone tried to make the track somewhat safe to drive on. Amidst the safety car laps, Fisichello's Jordan made a strategic pit stop for fuel and fresh Bridgeton intermediates on the seventh lap. However, this decision proved costly for the struggling Jordan team. The Italian, who had put in a strong qualifying performance with a light fuel load, re-emerged on the track in 19th position. As the race drew closer to going green, all eyes were on the dramatic battle for the top positions. Once the safety car pulled in, Barrichello attempted a strategic start, holding back his acceleration until just before the penultimate kink. However, this tactic backfired. And now uh, Coulthard might punish him for that down into turn one. Causing him to lose the lead to Coulthard's McLaren into the first corner. A lap later, Raikkonen's McLaren zoomed past Barrichello into turn one and repeated the manoeuvre shortly after, snatching the lead from Coulthard and leaving the latter vulnerable. Juan Pablo Montoya, driving for Williams BMW, showed his class by swiftly warming his Michelins and surging from 7th to claim 2nd position from Coulthard, around the outside of Turn 3 on lap 11 out of the 54-lap race. Barrichello, battling a misfire that eventually cleared, slipped as low as 6th, but swiftly made his way back up the ranks, overtaking Weber, who had been pressuring Montoya. The Australian had, like I mentioned earlier, Earlier, achieved a remarkable third place in qualifying for Jaguar, carrying a relatively modest fuel load for a two-stop race. He was really putting himself about against the best in his first appearance at the front of the grid. This phase of the race remained relatively calm compared to the events that were yet to unfold, and despite a scuffle between Jano Trulli and Ralph Schumacher at Turn 3, both emerged unscathed. However, the calm was short-lived, as the first major incident of the race involving Panis and Furman prompted the return of the safety car. Has he been hit from behind? Oh, that's Ralph Furman about to come in and uh, whack the back of him. As lap 22 of the 54-lap race drew to a close, race leader Kimi Raikkonen faced a critical restart. He knew he had to seize this opportunity, something Barrichello hadn't quite managed earlier. Cristiano de Matta's Toyota seemed to hold a deceptive fourth position, as he hadn't quite made a pit stop yet. Raikkonen pressed the throttle with precision as he exited Yonkau, leaving the chasing pack in his wake. Meanwhile, Barrichello, filling 
feeling the heat from Montoya, who tried to overtake him in the first corner, had to put the hammer down. He skillfully overtook around the outside of Dematas Toyota at turn 3 on lap 23, securing a coveted fourth place for the moment. However, this phase of the race turned out to be just a fleeting pause. On lap 25, Montoya foreshadowed the impending chaos by spinning at the turn 3 left-hander, falling victim to aquaplaning at the same treacherous spot that had claimed Wilson earlier. Within moments, Antonio Pizziona, driving for Jaguar, joined him in F1 Ballet, and just two laps later, the unthinkable occurred. Louise, what can you tell us? Driver's already probably having problems with standing water. I think they're about to get a bit more. Schumi, oh, Schumacher's on. Michael Louis. Schumacher has crashed. Sorry, Louise, but uh, Martin spotted. Michael Schumacher's gone straight on in the same place. Michael Schumacher, holding a solid third place, veered off at the same perilous spot. The culprit was a sneaky stream across the track that had persisted, even as other sections of the circuit began to dry. And so, the safety car made its third appearance of the day, prompting Raikkonen to pit and dropping him to seven. This elevated Coulthard to the lead, closely trailed by Barrichello, Ralph Schumacher and Weber. As the race roared back to life at the conclusion of lap 29, Coulthard clung tenaciously to his lead. However, However, he found himself unable to shake off Barrichello's relentless pursuit. The Michelin intermediates on Coulthard's car had a slightly deeper cut and additional lateral grooves, providing better grip in wetter conditions and a faster warm-up. Yet, as sections of the track began to dry, the Bridgestone tyres proved out to be the better choice. This played into Barrichello's favour, but he exercised patience, refusing to let impatience guide his actions. Early into this phase of the race, Jos Verstappen's surprising run towards victory, yes, really, met an unfortunate fate. Unseen by many, he spun out of the race at turn three, while holding the eighth position, just ahead of Fisichella. Team boss Paul Stoddart couldn't hide his frustration, recognizing the missed opportunity. For probably the first time in Minardi's history, we were in a race-winning position. People may laugh, but only those of us in the team will ever know the truth. We had the strategy, but not the luck. The race charged forward under green flag conditions until lap 34, when the safety car was once again deployed. Triggered by by Jensen Button's heavy crash out of 5th place at, you guessed it, turn 3. With Weber taking advantage of the situation to pit, the race reset for the final sprint to the finish. Coulthard, Barrichello and Ralph Schumacher were positioned for podium glory, with Raikkonen in 5th ahead of Alonso and Fisichella. As the laps ticked on to number 37, Coulthard made a clean getaway to the final restart, and Raikkonen executed a superb pass on Alonso on the inside into turn 4. Look at this though, this is Raikkonen! Attacking Alonso, side by side, look how the car's bouncing as he tries to get the brakes on, and he's done it, a very clean move for position. He then showcased his prowess by overtaking Ralph Schumacher for third. Ralph keeps his foot in it, Kimi tries the outside line, can he keep it round? Yes, what a move, what a, what a driver this guy is, I mean, what can you say? Barrichello remained patient, knowing his opportunity would come, with Coulthard struggling on his front Michelins and the Bridgestone tyres gaining traction as much of the track was dry. Although some areas were still too wet for slicks, a change in the race order seemed inevitable. And so, on lap 45, Coulthard overshot at turn one. Barrichello not quite so close to David Coulthard. And uh, oh, oh, he's made, made a mistake, and Barrichello's through into the lead. Listen to the crowd. The crowd roared in anticipation, hopeful for a first home victory at Interlagos since Ayrton Senna's triumph in 1993. But the dream was short lived. Shockingly, he was out of fuel. Cool as well. Yeah, well, he's, he's slowing, is he? Yes, he is. He's slowing, Rupert Barrichello. I don't believe it. He's retired here. Despite the data suggesting he had enough to compete several more laps without a hitch, the Brazilian was heartbroken. This turn of events propelled Coulthard back into the lead, but he had to make a pit stop for fuel and fresh tyres at the end of lap 52. This strategic move positioned Raikkonen in the lead, yet he grappled with his struggling Michelins and faced relentless pressure from Giancarlo Fisichella, who was charging him in the bridge on equipped Jordan. On lap 54, we would witness one of the rarest sights in Formula One. The Iceman buckled under pressure. Fisichella's tyres have done a fair bit of work as well. Here we go, Fisichella takes the lead. What a move. Kimi's grip slipped at the Margulio left-hander, and Fisichella, against all odds, seized the golden opportunity to claim the lead. Now, this is usually the part where I'd wax lyrical about a fairy tale ending for Fisichella and the Jordan team, 
but the ending was anything but a fairy tale. On the same lap that Fissy Keller took the lead, Mark Webber, in his Jaguar, suffered a spectacular crash at the Arquibancadas corner, scattering deadly debris across the road. And coming up that road was a young Fernando Alonso. This unfortunate incident led to him leaving the circuit on a stretcher, ending what had been a stellar drive, marred by a penalty for pressing under yellow and making two pit stops in two laps due to Renault's tyre mix-up. A red flag was raised, and with over three quarters of the race completed, an official result was declared. Even this wasn't straightforward. Giancarlo Fisichella, driving for the financially troubled Jordan team, also reaped the benefits of his Bridgestone tyres, combined with the shrewd strategy of pitting under the initial safety car to refuel to the maximum. He had been racing relentlessly and continuously since, managing to overtake Raikkonen for the lead. Initially, it seemed Fisichella would be crowned the victor, and he jubilantly celebrated with his team in Parc Ferme. And in a twist that aligned with the surreal nature of the day, his Jordan caught fire behind him. But things wouldn't stay that way. A countback of two laps was undertaken to determine the final result, selecting lap 53 when Raikkonen was in the lead. So, when the time came for the trophy presentation, Kimi stood on the top step of the podium, while a disappointed Fisichella settled for runner-up. But the saga continued still, even after the end of the race. Jordan presented evidence that Fisichella had actually started lap 56 when the race was halted, asserting that the results should be based on the start of lap 54 when Fisichella was leading. So, after reconvening in Paris, the stewards concurred with Jordan's claim, ultimately declaring Fissy Keller as the fairy tale victor on the Friday following the race. It marked his long-awaited first win, but it would also be Jordan's final triumph. So, of course, the governing body redid the trophy ceremony, where Kimi awkwardly handed Fissy Keller the trophy before a practice session at the following round at Imola. I can't think of a more fitting end to a race like this than that. If you would like to see another controversial race that happened at Interlagos, you should go and watch my video on the second channel about it.